Hello everyone, welcome to my course on International Financial System. I am your course instructor Muhammad Ibn Karul Islam Boya. This is module 4 and, and in this module we are covering determination of exchange rate or how the exchange rates are determined. In this lecture we will cover measuring exchange rate movements and factors that influence exchange rates. There are many factors that influence exchange rates. Among these factors, we will cover relative inflation rates and relative interest rates in this lecture. Let's look at the objectives of this module. First of all, we'll explain how exchange rate movements are measured. Secondly, we'll analyze how the equilibrium exchange rate is, det is determined. And finally, we'll analyze the factors effect equilibrium exchange rate. Now let's look at the measurement of exchange rate movements. Probably you know that an exchange rate indicates the value of one currency against one unit of another currency. For example, assume that one dollar is equal to eighty five dollars. So here value of taka is measured against one dollar. So we can say that exchange rate between dollar and taka is eighty five dollars. When the value of a currency declines, we call it depreciation. And when the value of a currency increases, we call it appreciation. For example, assume that currently value of one dollar is equal to eighty-five pesos. If the value of dollar decreases to eighty taka, we we'll call it depreciation of dollar or appreciation of that. Similarly, if the value of dollar Increases to 90 taka from 85 taka, we'll call it appreciation of dollar or depreciation of taka. Now, <coughs> here is the formula to measure exchange rate movements. Here, HT indicates spot rate, which uh, it means the current exchange rate. And is T minus one indicates the uh, past exchange rate. So if there is a positive change, it will indicate that appreciation of foreign currency. And if there is a negative percentage change. It represents depreciation of the foreign cars. Now let's look at exchange rate equilibrium. So probably we know that an exchange rate is the price of a currency. For example, one dollar is equal to eighty five pesos. It means price of one dollar is 85 taka and the price of currencies are determined by their relative supply and relative demand. We know that uh, value of commodities like rice, potatoes, fluctuates depending on their supply and demand. In the same way, price of all currencies also fluctuates depending on their demand and supply. And the change in demand and change in supply of currencies changes the equilibrium exchange rate or equilibrium value of the currency. Now, let's look at the factors. That influence exchange rate. First of all, we'll analyze relative inflation rates. 
we know probably you know that what is meant by inflation. Inflation usually indicates uh, an increase in price level. So inflation indicates an increase in price level. Uh, we are comparing the relative over here. We are comparing the relative inflation rates between USA and the UK. We are assuming that US inflation is higher than the UK inflation. So it indicates that product price in USA is relatively higher than the product price in the UK. In this case, US consumers will prefer to purchase more British goods because British goods are cheaper than the US goods. And as a result, US demand for British goods will increase, which will also increase the US demand for British part because uh, if US consumers Try to purchase more British goods, they have to purchase it with pound, which is the British currency. So, when US consumers will purchase more British goods, it will also increase demand for British pound. On the other hand, if inflation in USA is higher than the inflation in the UK, in this case, British consumers will try to avoid US goods because products in the UK are cheaper than the products in the US. So there will be less demand of US goods in the UK. In this case, if British consumers purchase less product from the USA, there will be decrease in supply of pound in the USA. So, supply of British pound will decline in USA if US inflation is higher than the British inflation. So, if we conclude, we can say that as a result of higher US inflation, US demand for British pound will increase and supply of British pound in USA will decrease. So, simply says demand increases and supply decreases. In this case, value of British pound will increase or value of British pound will appreciate. Now, if US inflation is relatively lower than the British, infl British uh, inflation, uh, in that case, in that case, there will be less demand for British goods. Therefore, there will be less demands of British pound. Similarly, there will be more demand for US goods by British consumers. And as a result, there will be more supply of British pound in USA. In this case, value of pound will depreciate against dollar. Now, uh, let's look at relative interest rates. Again, we are comparing the interest rates between uh, USA and the uh, UK. Okay? And we are assuming that US interest rates are higher than the British interest rates. So, interest rates in USA are more attractive than the interest rates in the United Kingdom.
in this case american investors will not prefer their bank deposit in the uk because us interests are more attractive than the british interests therefore there will be less demand for british pound in the us right? on the other hand as the us interest rates are more attractive than british interest rates in that case british investors will prefer more us bank deposits as a result supply of british pound will increase in the usa so if we conclude we can say that as a result of higher interest rates in the usa there will be less demand for british pound in the usa and there will be a more supply of british pound in the usa so simply says demand decreases demand demand decreases and supply increases in that case equilibrium value of british pound will decrease or simply we can say that value of british pound will depreciate and if the situation is opposite like the if the us interest rates are lower than the british interest rates in that case there will be more demand for british bank deposit therefore there will be more demand for british pound similarly uh, british investors will not be interested to invest in usa as a result there will be less british desire for us bank deposit and hence there will be less supply of british pound in the usa in this case value of british pound will appreciate in us now we know that a relatively high interest rate may actually reflect expectation of relatively high inflation it means if there is a high interest rates there is an uh, a scope that inflation of that country will also increase which might discourage foreign investment so it is better to consider real interest rates which adjust the nominal interest rates for inflation and the real interest rate is approximately nominal interest rate minus inflation rate and it is sometimes called as the fisher effect so let me give you an example of real interest rate for example bangladesh banks currently provide on average 9% interest rate on deposit so this 9% is the nominal interest rate. currently in bangladesh inflation rate is 7% so in this case if the nominal interest rate is 9% inflation is 7% a real interest rate of bank deposit is 2% and this relationship between real interest rate and uh, nominal real interest rate nominal interest rate and inflation rate is often called fisher effect 